Hi, today in my classroom I will be discussing about motor abnormalities of esophagus. Of these motor abnormalities of esophagus, I will first discuss about diffused esophageal spasm. After this diffused esophageal spasm, I will discuss about various variants of diffused esophageal spasm. Of these variants, local esophageal spasm, nutcracker esophagus and hypertensive lower esophageal sphincter. Apart from this, I will talk about neurologic disorders related to esophagus. I will talk about cricopharyngeal achalasia, achalasia cardia and muscular disorders of esophagus. So first I will talk about diffused esophageal spasm in short. Now this diffused esophageal spasm is a motility disorder in which during act of swallowing there is severe contractions of esophagus and because of these severe contractions in esophagus patient develop severe dysphagia and chest pain. Now this diffused esophageal spasm is seen in about 5 to 15 percent of population. No age group is spared from this disorder. This particular disorder Diffused esophageal spasm is a functional disorder and it is classified into two types. One is primary esophageal diffused esophageal spasm and secondary diffused esophageal spasm. Now this primary diffused esophageal spasm is of obscure etiology. As such, there is no cause of this particular esophageal spasm, primary esophageal spasm. Now this primary esophageal spasm is thought to be because of involvement of nerve plexus of esophagus. Diffused esophageal spasm which is seen in the old age group is thought to be because of vagal nerve degeneration, because of degeneration of myentric plexus of esophagus. Diffused esophageal spasm is also seen in young age group and in young age group it is usually related to psychiatric problem, generalized anxiety disorder, during depression, because of depression sometimes patient develops this diffuse esophageal spasm. Usually this diffuse esophageal spasm in young age group is seen in anxious persons who are anxious, who are of aggressive nature. In these persons, during, du during meals, they suddenly develop severe chest pain and dysphagia. While taking meals, sometimes they are quarreling and during this process of quarreling, they develop dysphagia. So this diffuse esophageal spasm in young age group is because of anxiety. Pro most, in most of the cases, it is because of anxiety. Then this type of dysphagia, primary dysphagia is also seen in diabetics. In diabetics, again, when studies were done, various studies showed that probably it is because of again involvement of myentric plexus and vagus nerve in diabetes. So we can say that it may be because of neuropathy. In alcoholics, again because of neuropathy, involvement of myentric plexus, vagus nerve, these people may develop, alcoholic people may develop diffuse esophageal spasm. So we consider these all categories in primary diffuse esophageal spasm. Secondary one, secondary diffuse esophageal spasm is seen in cases of gastroesophageal reflux disease. Because of reflux of acid, whole of the esophagus is irritated, it is inflamed and nerve plexus are irritated, they are stimulated and because of this there is contraction in esophagus. So this is a secondary type of diffuse esophageal spasm. Sometimes it is because of invasion of esophageal carcinoma in myentric plexus and nerve plexus of esophagus. So these are considered as secondary causes of diffuse esophageal spasm. In most of the causes, in most of the cases, cause you cannot detect and so we say that it is simply a functional disorder 
uh, disorder of ex it is an exclusion diagnosis we can say that after excluding all causes if no cause is found then we say that it is uh, exclusion diagnosis so this is a one of the exclusion diagnosis of dysphagia and chest pain in the cases of diffuse esophageal spasm the musculature of esophagus gets gets hypertrophied because of repeated contractions muscle wall of esophagus is thickened in pathological studies when pathological studies were done it was seen that the muscle or thickness of esophagus was increased and probably this was because of repeated contractions now these cases of uh, in these cases of diffuse esophageal spasm when histopathology was done it was seen in histopathology that muscle fibers the muscle fibers were increased in number in esophagus and cells hypertrophy were hypertrophied there there was there was cellular hypertrophy so in these cases of diffuse esophageal spasm we never do these pathological studies most of the diagnosis is made on clinical basis now clinically these patients of diffuse esophageal spasm they present with chest pain they present with dysphagia there is a sticking sensation in the retrosternal region in the throat region because of diffuse esophageal spasm during act of swallowing so there is dysphagia in this diffuse esophageal spasm and chest pain now as these patients they present with chest pain it must, it should be differentiated from angina because angina is a emergency so first you will have to rule out that whether it is because of this chest pain this biggest chest pain is because of diffuse esophageal spasm or it is because of coronary artery disease it is anginal pain so whenever a patient comes with these symptoms of dysphagia and chest pain first exclude the uh, anginal pain by doing ecg and if ecg is normal you go for further studies you go for echocardiography you go for treadmill test and rule out every cause which is related to heart because that is dreadful in that patient may die so that is the first condition which should be ruled out whenever a patient comes with diffuse esophageal spasm once you have ruled out the cause related to heart then you can say that it is diffuse esophageal spasm in the next step you will have to rule out different causes related which may cause this diffuse esophageal spasm like diabetes so in history rule out any past history of diabetes any history of alcoholism this should be ruled out and after you have ruled out then you can say that it is a idiopathic diffuse esophageal spasm primary diffuse esophageal spasm in these patients of diffuse esophageal spasm when they come to the hospital in in these cases the diagnostic procedure is manometric studies now in these manometric studies we introduce a balloon catheter through oral cavity down into the stomach and then gradually it is pulled up it is connected to a barometer and then it is gradually pulled up and pressure studies are done pressure is measured at different levels of esophagus during diffuse esophageal spasm so pressure in whole of the esophagus will be increased the second procedure which should be done related to esophagus in diffuse diffuse esophageal spasm is upper gi endoscopy with the help by help of upper gi endoscopy one must rule out secondary causes of diffuse esophageal spasm like gastroesophageal reflux disease and carcinoma so these are the two procedures which are diagnostic procedures in case of diffuse esophageal spasm apart from this you will have to do electrocardiography and treadmill test to rule out coronary artery disease chest pain because of coronary artery disease so these are the investigations 
one of the investigation old investigation is barium x-ray now in this barium x-ray when you see the barium x-ray in the barium x-ray you will see esophagus like this and this appearance of esophagus is known as corkscrew esophagus so overall investigations which are done in this cases are number one is manometric studies number two is endoscopy number three is electrocardiogram treadmill test and barium swallow x-ray so in barium x-ray you will see this type of image and this is known as corkscrew esophagus so this is how you diagnose a case of diffused esophageal spasm now how to treat this case of diffused esophageal spasm once you have excluded coronary cause then how to treat this diffused esophageal spasm the best way of treatment of diffused esophageal spasm is relaxation exercises with the help of relaxation exercises you can control 90 to 95 percent of diffused esophageal spasm relaxation exercises are isotonic exercises like jogging running swimming yoga these are all relaxation exercises and these relaxation exercises help a lot in diffused esophageal spasm apart from this medications like anxiolytic drugs which reduce the anxiety of a person are given to control this diffused esophageal spasm calcium channel blockers are sometimes used to control severe diffused esophageal spasm so this is how we control diffuse esophageal spasm if person is diabetic diabetes should be controlled if person is alcoholic one should abstain from alcohol and proper treatment of alcoholic neuropathy should be done so this is how we treat diffused esophageal spasm now variants one of the variants of diffuse esophageal spasm is local esophageal spasm in local esophageal spasm there is local contraction segmental contraction of esophagus during act of swallowing uh, otherwise presentation is almost the same treatment is the same there is no difference in the treatment there is no difference in the investigations all investigations are same another variant is hypertensive lower esophageal sphincter now this hypertensive lower esophageal sphincter in in this particular case in the lower esophageal area pressure is increased there is severe contraction during act of swallowing so these patients they complain of epigastric pain and dysphagia during act of swallowing again this in these cases we will proceed in the similar way as diffused esophageal spasm treatment is same investigations are same whole of the follow up is the same so like this we proceed in cases of variants of diffuse esophageal spasm yes one another variant of diffuse esophageal spasm is nutcracker esophagus in nutcracker esophagus the severity of contractions are more than that of diffuse esophageal spasm very severe pain is there severe contraction segmental contractions is there and this is known as nutcracker esophagus so these are all variants and investigative approach treatment approach is all the same the only message from this discussion is that whenever a person is presenting with diffuse esophageal spasm or any variant of diffuse esophageal spasm in those cases first of all always rule out coronary cause of chest pain because the chest pain of esophagus is very similar to angina it will occur in retrosternal area it will radiate to left upper limb right upper limb neck or epigastrium so always rule out coronary cause of chest pain and dysphagia 
after this only you after then only you proceed for the investigations of diffuse dissociative phageal spasm if it is in your mind and other procedures because if you miss the coronary artery disease as the cause of chest pain and dysphagia that may harm patient they that may cause mortality in that particular person so this is how we will manage and proceed in a case of diffuse esophageal spasm thank you